First question on this episode came from Lynetta and appreciate you being a Team Keep It Clean patron. Today in Graven, how are you and the family doing? We are doing great. How are you doing? I appreciate you asking too. She said, I got a few questions. Do you think if Ozzy Newsom was still the GM for the Ravens, Lamar would already have his contract? That's a very interesting question. I'm going to have to go with no. Um, because the most recent quarterback that the Ravens had before Lamar Jackson, that was Joseph Vincent Flacco. I think that's his middle name. But anyway, it was Joe Flacco. And Joe Flacco went through same thing Lamar went through a different way. Uh, but he went through the same thing Lamar went through, hey, where he got to uh, the fifth year of his contract, didn't have a contract, um, and he they, they tried. They tried, but there was something with, they were off with, uh, I think, a, maybe a couple million dollars or something like that, but they were off. They, they did not, they weren't able to come to an agreement. Um, so then Joe Flacco ended up playing out the last year of his deal, then they, of course, won the Super Bowl. Then after that, he got paid. He became the highest paid quarterback in the league. Um, so Ozzy was already in this situation with the previous quarterback. So, I mean, I don't have a reason to believe that it would be different with Lamar. I mean, we could hope, but it's something that would just – we'll really never know. And the only thing that we can go off of – is the last time that he was in this situation that was with Flacco, and they didn't get it done till after that fifth year, to the sixth year. To they didn't get it done to the off season of the fifth year, or the off season after the fifth year. Excuse me. So would Ozzy have had got it done? Who knows? I, I I feel like it's just it's it's too tough to know. I know a lot of people will be like, "Hey, Ozzy Newsom would have been had this thing done." And I know a lot of people say that out of frustration at the fact that Eric DaCosta doesn't have it done. But I, I can't sit up here and say, oh, yeah, Ozzy would have definitely had Lamar's deal done for sure. Because it's just one of those things. That it's, it's too hard to tell. Um, but she also said, do you think the Ravens will start over, like, going to the draft and getting a quarterback in the first round? If Lamar walks, which I think he will, I think Lamar should get everything he deserves. Well, as far as walk... Um, they would never let him just walk via free agency. They they definitely wouldn't do that. Um, so they they could tag or trade him. We'll, I mean, we'll see. Hopefully they get it done, but we you never know with the NFL. Uh, but back to the first part, um, do you think they'll start over and, and go to the draft and get a quarterback in the first round? I think it would depend on the capital that they had. Um, I, I think that would, that's where it would, that would be the uh, biggest thing right there. The capital that they had, where they were picking at, uh, the ammo that they had if they possibly wanted to move up or move down or whatever. Um, because it could be a scenario where they may not like the quarterbacks that are coming out. They they may not they may not be high on the quarterbacks that are coming out. So I could see a scenario where if they don't really like the guys that are out there or they're not in a position to get any of the guys that, that they do like out there, then they ride out with Tyler Huntley for a year. Sort of um I feel like it will be one of them Sort of like a, a wash year where it's like, all right, we, we hope to win, but we're really not seriously expecting anything. Um, so and that's not a shot at Tyler Huntley at all. I just feel like that's how the Ravens would operate if they did that. And they would just hold out and wait for a quarterback in the following draft. Um, so, And it sucks that we, we even got to have these conversations about these possibilities uh, about uh, that, that's sad. Uh, and then she said, can you imagine if Lamar had the weapons like the Eagles or 49ers? He would eat and go crazy. I'm wondering, what do you think? Oh, we already know. We've seen so much of what he's done without all of that stuff. So just imagine him with it. It would, it would be a beautiful thing. She said, thanks for all you do, and I appreciate you. No, Lynetta, man, no, I, I appreciate you. Thank you for supporting the channel. You'll be on all the live streams. Always see your name. Lynetta from b -Mars. I said, oh, there she go. There she go, but I, I appreciate you. Thank you for everything that you do. Next question came from Amari. He said, man, I'm going to my first Ravens game ever. I got tickets to the Ravens versus Steelers. Oh, and it's a night game too. Ooh, I'm happy for you. That should be a lot of fun, and it'll be a lot warmer than the most recent game against the Falcons. He said, I was hoping to see Lamar, but I don't think that will happen. Yeah, as of right now, it's not looking like it because it's, it's Wednesday at 11.42 p.m. Wednesday. So Lamar didn't practice today. By the time you see this video, the Thursday practice will have already happened and maybe even Friday too, we'll see. But anyway, 
Um, he said, if you look at the video of Lamar Jackson and John Harbaugh, as coach is walking toward him, Lamar keeps backing up and his feet are pointed away from coach, which usually means you don't really want to talk or you are slightly uncomfortable and want to leave. I know this because it's sales 101. I, I, I love that. I love when people incorporate uh, stuff from the corporate world. Uh, when we look at stuff in the NFL, I always appreciate that uh, because it makes it it's a way that uh, it helps people to understand stuff that much more. And it's a way to break stuff down. You can create different analogies and whatnot. I appreciate that. But anyway, he said it's sales 101. I hope things get better with these guys, but I do think Lamar will finish the playoffs strong. It doesn't no good to sit out in the playoffs. Right. Uh, and I mean, it all depends on how you look at it. I think it would be better for him to play in the playoffs, but it all depends on how you look at it. Some people feel like, oh, LeBron, like this this team, they not built for the playoffs or whatnot. They ain't really got no weapons like that. He still got the same offensive coordinator. Da 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 da. Lamar done had to be Superman so many times, and he might be tired of being Superman. Da -da -da. So that's the people that would want him to sit out. For me, I think for the playoffs, it can help because if you go there, you do your thing in the playoffs, you go off, um, then it only helps your case. And then another thing, too, even if they lost in the playoffs, everything would just depend on how. Say, for instance, Lamar goes out there, goes 34 for 34 out of 40, three touchdowns, three, 302 yards, something like that, and the Ravens lost. Like, oh, because like of defense. And he showed it wasn't on him. Then they'd be like, oh, okay, that's good. But playoffs, like, like it's – and I think, too – with the NFL, they always talk about it. So what have you done for me lately type of league? So the last thing people remember from Lamar was him getting sacked on in the Broncos game. Um, so if he comes out in the playoffs and does his thing, does a good job, he creates a new memory for people. Uh, and, and that can help him, especially if he goes off. So I think it would be better for him to play in the playoffs if he's healthy, though, too. That's another thing. So, I mean, Lamar, he knows that people know he's going to get paid. Whether he played the rest of this year or doesn't play the rest of this year. I think he will definitely play sometime this year. But he's going to get paid regardless. But um, I, th I feel like the playoffs could just it could help that much more. Uh, anyway, he said, by the way, that might be a reach. But it's just the first thing I noticed in that video before reading the comments. And why didn't you know if your starting quarterback was on the sideline supporting the team in a win and in game? You talking about Harbaugh or me? I think you talking about Harbaugh. But either way. Um, I remember I, at first I didn't know Lamar was even there I didn't even know he was at the game um, But maybe Harbaugh didn't either I don't know I don't know what he was talking about right there uh, But yeah I, I guess I gotta watch it I, I didn't really watch it And I, I, I see you watch You not only watch it You broke it down You you you, you, you zoomed in on the, the feet and the toes and all that You say Lamar toes going that way Hobbs going this way He don't want to talk to But I don't know I, I feel like the, the truth in all of this It'll come out And I think it'll come out uh, this offseason So we'll see how it goes man Next question came from my guy Lord Valley He said What negative offense do we really have? Uh, back with another one Broski I'm checking numbers And in all honesty They all add up on paper But not in gameplay So I checked Kirk Cousins And Vikings offense The guy is throwing 30 times On average And uh, 275 yards a game And a couple of touchdowns In comparison Lamar averages 30 passes And Huntley But they are very much Empty throws And not throwaways Because it's no impact passes they just chew clock and I would say 8 to 10 come on third and long desperation plays. So, yes, we do pass the ball, but the scheme is very toxic. Oof. The boy called the scheme toxic. I ain't never heard that before, but I ain't mad at it. He said, uh, and also, don't know if you checked, but Gus, JK, and KD all at 500 rushing yards apiece. And that's crazy. Just imagine if we did do the 15 carry cap for a full season, we would have 4,000-yard rushes on one team. And that's without Lamar design runs, which I don't understand because he is going to scramble anyway. Seven to ten times a game, getting 40 to 50 yards easy. So those carries could have been used for throws to the backs. Uh, so what I'm saying is the Ravens could actually be scary come playoff time. Even with the injuries, we don't really lack anything. But, yeah, receiver would be big. But we have a great QB and a great group of backs and a top five tight end. And two to three star possession. Oh, two to, and two to, two to three. Oh, oh, excuse me. Two three star possession receivers in Watkins and Robinson and a deep man with Jackson, which I know is going to explode soon. So in comparison to three-headed monsters, Eagles, they have Jalen Hurts, uh, Sanders, and A.J. Brown. Vikings got Cousins, uh, 
Dalvin Cook and Justin Jefferson. Raiders got Josh Jacobs, David Carr, or Derek Carr, uh, and Devontae Adams. But now Derek Carr is benched but because uh, he'll be going after this year. Bengals got Burrow, Joe Mixon, and Jamar Chase. Ravens got Lamar, uh, J.K. Gus and Lamar uh, as far as rushing, and then Andrews as the receiver. So to me, we good. We just got to stop the fourth down attempts, punts, and kick field goals because we put too much on the defense to, to deal with and take points and don't beat ourselves. By not attacking red zones for touchdowns, we are ranked 30th offensively in the red zone at 46% compared to last year at 63%. We have 50% away and 45% at home, 13 touchdowns, one picks in the red zone. Um, let me just go back to our three-headed monster that you named. You said Lamar as the passer, J.K. Gus and Lamar as the rusher, and Andrews as the receiver. Doesn't quite stack up to the other the other guys that you went through, but anyway, let's keep going. Uh, this is our AR, AFC playoff quarterbacks, which is scary. This shows pride, and they mean business, not playing a field goal game. I ain't talking about Burrow, Mahomes, Allen, Trevor Lawrence, Herbert, Tua. So he said another interesting stat is J.K. has eight throws caught Seven for oh oh he you mean eight passes that he caught he got eight passes that he caught seven for forty eight how can we really be taken seriously if we aren't using the threats we have even with the injuries and cut time he should have at least thirty receptions with Drake or Gus spelling him uh, and and what this does is keep defenders honest Big Pat had thirteen throws and caught eleven for seventy four yards waste of time and opportunity can't make no one miss get three four yards on any down uh, if that. So with Duvin Bateman down, we only have likely left for 25 catches. That means something. I feel like instead of having throws to 15 different people in a season, find your core seven to eight people and build chemistry now because you have 92 extra passes that could have went to your main guys and and des destinated players. Mm. I'm not sure what, you, what word you were saying right there, but uh, you, you have 92 extra passes that could have went to your main guys. Uh Oh, and designated playmakers. Okay, I, I got it now. And you force them to step up and make plays. Look at Osborne on the Vikings, Pilot on the Cowboys, LOL. That's it, man. When is Bateman expected to be back, and how do you feel about the offense in the playoffs, and how would you run your game plan? Peace and love. My bad on the long one. Just got a little too deep in my investigation. Well, yeah, you did. This was, woo, that was like 18 and a half pages long. But now nah, it's all good. Um, I feel, I, I'm scared for the offense in the uh, postseason. I'm, I'm scared for them. I really am because I just I was gonna say I don't know what to expect, but we gotta go based off of what we've seen. And if that's what we're gonna be seeing in the playoffs, what we've been seeing, and the way that the play calling and the lack of sequential play calling and all that, then yeah, it's a big yikes. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Question from Subs, where you can ask any question you want, and we answer in a video like this. You want to be part of it? You can check the description for all of that good stuff. Next question came from MBK. He said, hey, Graven, uh, this is my first time sending in a question. I think we all hope that Lamar will be re-signed. Well, a lot of us do. There's some people that's like, no, let him walk. Let him walk. And, but again, everybody's entitled to their own opinion, and we respect them all. But anyway... Uh, he said, I think we all hope that Lamar will be re-signed, but like you and many others, that Lamar might not be here for the long run. I have a feeling that Lamar will, will be here for the 2023 season, but if they don't plan to sign him, then trade him to one of these teams that have two first-round picks. That way, the Ravens can load up at corner, wide receiver, and possibly trade up or trade in free agency for a quarterback. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean... <sighs> I think two, of the, two out of those three things would happen if they traded Lamar. You said uh, load up at corner. Yeah. Uh, possibly trade up or trade in free agency for a quarterback. Well, yeah. Then, I mean, you would be forced to. I mean, again, there's Tyler Huntley. You could just roll with him, and they may. But those are the two, th two out of the three things that I think would happen. Because you also talked about them loading up at wide receiver. And, I mean, you, like, you know how the Ravens get down. I, I know there are some people that 
feel like, and I feel like we have no reason to believe that the Ravens would change who they are, even if they traded Lamar. Um, now there's some people that feel like, oh, if we trade Lamar, then we'll have money to get those wide receivers. They would have the money for uh, the Ravens wouldn't start spending it all of a sudden. Like, oh, okay, now we traded Lamar. Now let's start getting wide receivers. That would be backwards. That would be backwards. Like, why wouldn't you do that when he was here? You didn't do it for Lamar. You didn't do it for Flacco. What would change now? Well, speaking of wide receivers, next question came from my guy Juan. He said, we always talk about how Lamar Jackson hasn't reached his full potential and never will under Greg Roman and John Harbaugh. But why isn't that talked about with our current wide receivers? Everyone is quick to say that we don't have any elite wide receivers. We need wide receivers one hour, wide receivers aren't good, etc. But we never seen what they can do. So how can we complain and judge them so quick? For the, 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 It's all under the same tree. It's all the same stuff. The, 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 your opening line is the same exact reason. That's it. And we talked about it before, too, plenty of times. But anyway, he said, let, let me read the opening, your opening line again. We always talk about how Lamar Jackson hasn't reached his full potential and never will under Greg Roman and John Harbaugh. You can use that same logic for the wide receivers, too. Same thing. So that's it. But anyway, uh, he also said, how can we see what they can do and what they are capable of if we never put them in those situations and give them snaps? I'm not at all saying all of our wide receivers are pro bowlers, but what I'm saying is they are more than serviceable to get us beyond where we are at if given the opportunity and we should be doing better offensively. Guys just get so trashed by the media and especially the fans and lack of snaps make them lose their hot hand, so, so to speak, in their confidence. Once again, thanks, thanks to the coaches for that. What do you think? Oh, I agree with you. I, I I don't think there's anybody that would disagree with you at all. Um, this again, this this is a philosophy thing. It, it's and it's not even just about Lamar. It's about the word receivers too. Offensively, guys just in the passing game, in the running game. Oh yeah, th those guys. Got, you, you you see the people that we do know about versus the people who we don't know about. Like we we find out everything about the running backs. We find out everything about the running backs. Oh yeah, we know J.K. his strengths, weaknesses, Gus Edwards and whatnot. Found out about Drake. Mike Davis and whatnot. We'll find out about them. But the pass catchers, especially wide receivers, that's where the biggest question marks are. There's people still questioning, oh, can Lamar throw the ball? Da, 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 da. Passing game is where all the questions are. That's where all the questions are. So, again, it applies to both Lamar and the wide receivers. And he said, by the way, with this mentality and philosophy, it's irrelevant to go out and get a wide receiver. One, I still think we should, but what's really the point if we won't use them effectively? That's why hopefully they will... Change that mentality and the philosophy. Next question came from Jorge. He said, Hey, Graven, what's good? My name is Jorge, and I've been uh, watching the channel for a long time now. Appreciate that, man. Uh, first, I want to say thank you for all you that you do. Uh, it really helps me get through my days getting to hear you talk Ravens while I'm driving or at work. Oh, if you got a long drive, then yeah, the videos are perfect for you. Cause I know they be long. The videos be long. But anyway, he said, Keep up the good work. I appreciate all you do for this channel. I appreciate you watching, man. My question is, with the Ravens clinching the playoff spot, do you think the Ravens will bench some starters for the Bengals game, or do you think they should play everyone that's eligible? Thanks again. No, I appreciate it, man. I think, it, I think everything depends on the Steelers game. If the Ravens, well, and, and the Bills game, too. If the Ravens lost the Steelers game um, and, the Raven, I mean, and the Bengals beat the Bills, then Ravens can't win a division. So the game wouldn't really matter. Wouldn't matter to the Bengals, and it wouldn't matter to the Ravens. So that could be that's to be determined. Um, if the Ravens won against the Steelers, and no matter what happens in the Bengals game, uh, then I think the Ravens will definitely still continue to play starters. So everything depends on how the Steelers game goes. Next question came from my guy, Dewan. He said, a look in the future. It's March 2023. Lamar and the Ravens couldn't come to an agreement on a contract extension. And Baltimore tags and trades him to the New York Giants for two first round picks and a third round pick. Due to the Giants head coach, Brian Dayball, knowing the talent they have with Jackson, they trade a second round pick and a fourth round pick for DeAndre Hopkins. Fast forward to February 2024. The New York Giants versus the Buffalo Bills uh, in the Super Bowl. The Baltimore Ravens finished fourth in the... <laughs> <laughs> the Baltimore Ravens finished fourth in the division at 6-11 and 11. Uh, Greg Roman is finally fired Mark Andrews requests a trade Ravens fans protest, protest, ah, protesting in front of the castle uh, Out at Owings Mills calling for EDC and Harbaugh to be fired I know this is just me coming up with a crazy worst case scenarios But can you imagine if this actually happened And what's your opinion on something like this if it happened Now the whole protest and all that they, You don't need to do that outside the castle um, But Oh, I, I I would be sad. Um, first Lamar getting traded, then if if I watched Lamar get traded, really to whoever, but if I watched him get traded to the Giants, 
and then watch them go out and get DeAndre Hopkins, I would be so sad. Like, I'd be happy for Lamar, happy for DeAndre Hopkins and stuff, but I'll be so sad because I'll be thinking that that should have been us. And then watch them go to the Super Bowl. Oof. <laughs> I'll be so sad. I'll be happy for Lamar and them and DeAndre Hopkins too, but I will be sad as a Ravens fan. I'll be like, man, that would hurt. That 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 would hurt really, really bad. Yeah, this feels like a dream.